Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. Most are afraid of unknown depths, skirting shores thinking world flat. I'm with the island girls in celebration of new religion. Nobody led me or said this way. I sailed alone on makeshift raft with wind as companion. Fate for deliverance, confidence enough to assess new disposition. Seekers of lost paradise may seem fools to those who never sought the other worlds. Welcome to Momentary Zen with Zen Garcia. Visit www.fallenangels.tv You're listening to Revolution Radio. And he made a plan with his powers. He sent his angels to the daughters of men that they might take some of them for themselves and raves offspring for their enjoyment. And at first they did not succeed. When they had no success, they gathered together again and they made a different plan together. They created a counterfeit spirit who resembles the spirit who had descended so as to pollute the souls through it. And the angels changed themselves in their likeness into the likeness of their mates the daughters of men, filling them with the spirit of darkness which they had mixed for them, and with evil. They brought gold and silver and a gift and copper and iron and metal and all kinds of things, and they steered the people who had followed them into great troubles by leading them astray with many deceptions. They, the people, became old without having enjoyment. They died not having found truth and without knowing the God of truth. And thus the whole creation became enslaved forever from the foundation of the world until now. Welcome friends. I'm your host Zen Garcia. This is Momentary Zen here on Revolution Radio. I uh, thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. I have as co-host Kathy Dunson. Kathy, are you there, sister? Yes, I am. Good evening, everybody. Uh, always a pleasure to fellowship with you, sister. And as special guests this evening, we have both Tim Clark and Chris Delion from End Times Matrix News. Uh, Chris, are you there, sister? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Uh, hello, and I'm glad that you were able to make it and join us this evening. Tim, are you there, brother? Yes, I'm here, and I brought Chris with me this week. Excellent. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the round table, and uh, it's just going to be an informal setting, and we'll just uh, go into all things esoteric. And so, um, but let me give you, ch uh, Tim, a chance to give out your website contact information and uh you know everything connected to end times matrix news and then we'll go to chris okay end times matrix news on youtube that's where we put all our videos um we also have the two facebook pages chris uh etmn and also end times matrix news and you can catch what we're following there from breaking stories to our own posts, uh, some little podcasts we put up, different things. Excellent. Chris, do you want to share your contact information or Facebook or anything of that nature? Yeah, I'm on Facebook as Chris ETMN, and we have a website, endtimesmatrixnews.com, which we're actually in the process of updating into a new website. Okay, excellent. Um, when is that supposed to be online, or when's that uh, happening? Well, it's on it. We are um, under construction right now. Okay, <laughs> so, so no, no timetable for that. Right, we're we're trying to proceed quickly on that. Uh, we're also working on the book project that Chris and I are working on to bring that to fruition. Also, excellent. Well, um. Just uh, no, just yesterday, November first, we got our business license for 
Sacred Word Publishing, and so we are all legit and just just a matter of now um, getting the website up and connecting it with the nonprofit, um, which I did a show on all that, so people can go check out the um, Endeavor Freedom and Sacred Word Publishing show to find out more about all that, and you, of course, you can let us know if we can be of any service to you guys um, in what you are doing. We'll most certainly be glad to help out in any way but um let me give you, each of you um is there any news story that you find of interest and i'm i'm sure kathy has several uh but anything that you want to mention here before we go into discussion kathy do you have anything uh well uh, i mean there's so much coming out right at the moment on um hillary clinton uh there was uh, something well there's supposedly a counter coup going on until uh steve pagenic um who is from intelligence past administrations has uploaded a video talking about you know what uh several intelligence people have come out uh in their um very strong in this trying to um expose hillary and and what's going on and, and get her to step down from running for president so, I mean, there's just things breaking every five minutes right now. <laughs> right, right. And uh, I'll share a comment. Um, uh, just uh, the past couple of days, I've been doing several interviews with uh, Stan Johnson over there, Prophecy Club News, and he shared with me an interesting story about that same thing that you were talking about and the rediscovery of many emails that they had scrubbed and which they had disappeared successfully um, and that with the seizure of Anthony Weiner's cell phone and his laptop that they gained access to a lot of that material that was successfully disappeared and so this is why you know it's come to light again and from what I understand um, they most certainly have enough information to bring down the Clintons, and not just the Clintons, but so much of the establishment there in Washington, D.C., and also the Clinton Foundation, that accepting what, bribes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, did you get a chance to read that article that I had sent you? Yes. Yeah. And from other things that I've heard about that, I think that's the most interesting aspect. And th what, what that article, um, well, actually, it was like a letter i don't know where it originated but it, all of it rang completely true to mm -hmm. me it said it was from an fbi insider right. said not not to you know be so fixed on the emails because it's the clinton foundation right. that is the big kahuna here and from everything else that i've heard and seen um it's the foreign government involvement it's you know the tentacles all throughout the government you know we have a corrupt government and uh, this totally, is yeah. what is ready to be blown sky high. And right. you know, it's, it's, uh, that's where the house of cards, I mean, I, t I told my mother, if you, anyone has seen house of cards on Netflix, you know, that's tame compared to what's really going on in our government, sadly. Yeah. I haven't seen that, but, uh, also, uh, I've been told that, um, well in, in that, email that I sent you, it also speaks about how she had um, sold these secretive programs that she wasn't even supposed to have access to that one of somebody, one of her donors had given to her and that she traded these secrets off for high level donations through the Clinton Foundation and that um, and this wasn't in the email but that there are high-level FBI agents that are um, resigning and, and retiring in order to protest they're not indicting her and bringing charges. And so there's like um, a lot going on in Washington because everybody knows how criminal and corrupt she is, and they're trying to force the hand of uh, Comey to actually do something about it and the fact that he actually made um, a statement and brought this to the attention of the media before that of the election because you know of course uh, the Clintons and others have been trying to pressure him to withhold it and to not allow it to affect the well 
I say election selection, but uh, right. Uh, you're right. And and so, um, and they're trying to install a merge certainly, and and so we'll see what happens. But there's a well, lot. There. One other thing I'd point out, because the black box voting with Bev Harris, she's come out, and I haven't heard this in the major media, of course, I'm not really surprised, but about the fractional, uh, fraction magic is what um, her video is called, and anyone who hasn't seen that, be sure and, and search on YouTube for fraction magic, and um, all of that is going on, and it's just amazing uh, that it has gone this far at this time. And, and so many things around the edges are, are just coming together at this particular time. I, I personally don't see how they would give up power. I mean, not to go mm -hmm. completely. I just, I don't believe they would give up power. And so I look for, you know, what other things can happen. We've got Russia and we've got, you know, the U S is, uh, so involved in the Middle East and in Syria, and that's a powder keg. Anything could happen at any moment. I don't see them wanting, I mean, we're going to see a peaceful transition of power. So, you know, we've got the voter fraud and, and then everything that's coming out showing what a treasonous government. So there's so many things that could happen in such a short period of time. Everybody needs to be paying attention. And praying. And uh, and, uh, I'll, and final comment on this, and then we'll go to, to Chris and Tim. Um, but the the whole thing, you know, WikiLeaks has information, and there's other stuff that is being released. And so uh, we know that the Clintons have whacked people; that people have all of a sudden ended up dying in accidents or being shot in the streets. I mean, um, the people that some of those that have gone up and that were going to testify against them have ended up dead. And so there's the knowledge of that kind of thing happening too, uh, as far as with the FBI. And so, um, you know, there are some who are wanting to come forward, know they have to be very careful uh, because, you know, the high level assassinations have taken place. And that um, that is definitely a possibility uh, for those that might want to leak or bring forth any information. But anyways, uh, let me go to Chris or Tim. Do you have any comment on this or if you anything that you wanted to share with uh, the listening audience, anything of interest? Chris, you want to go ahead? No, you can go ahead, Tim. I know you've okay. been following the news. Well, just on this story, I um, I mean, there's a couple ways of looking at it. I actually feel spiritually that there's a lot of uh, breakthrough as far as the potential for the corruption to be dealt with um, to some degree. I do believe that the uh, voting machines are compromised mm -hmm. um, and that even if we do see uh, – we, we've seen the Hegelian dialectic play out between the patriots – and the globalists, um, you know, that dynamic being set up here between the global, you know, globalist uh, communist takeover of the globe versus the Christian national um, independent freedom loving folks. So we got that dynamic. But I actually feel that um, prophetically, I'm, I am agreeing with some people that see this as a, that Haman is, the spirit of Haman is possibly hanging himself in this scenario that we might have uh, with the prayer and fasting of the Christians going on out there, that we might see a Esther like uh, event here where they, they designed to have the Christians in the FEMA camps and all that, and they might end up hanging themselves in the situation. So those are my comments on that topic. Uh, I'll say one final thing uh, before we leave and everybody knows my stance on the election, I just posted uh, recently on my Facebook page uh, a very lengthy quote from the occult technology of power, which talks about the controlled opposition and the false left-right paradigm. Uh, but uh, in talking with Stan today and other people, uh, they, you know, a lot of people seem to think that Trump is legit and that. Um, that he, this could be like a Josiah kind of thing uh, for America. I don't see it as that because I know that they always give us the false illusion of choice. Um, but, you know, I'm open and we'll see. And I pray for the betterment of America and, and the world. But again, you know, as far as candidates, 
um, in my opinion, they are always chosen, selected by the the elitists in order to own both sides of the the whole you know dog and pony show. Uh, and I I know a lot of people don't like um, my stance on that, but that's just what I've seen and have learned over the years. And uh, you know, with these kissing cousins which that was the name of an article that I wrote uh, about the George Bush elections with his cousin uh, Al Gore and then his cousin John Kerry. And then, you know, we had uh, Obama and um, John McCain. And, and Obama is also blood-related to Dick Cheney and, and some of those. And so we'll see how it all turns out. But uh, I pray for the best. But anyways... Um, is there, Chris, is there any topic that you would like to open with, talk about, or, you know, just a, a commentary, anything you want to share as far as projects that you're working on, new knowledge, insight, wisdom that you've come across, anything of that nature? Yeah, I just, I wanted to agree with Kathy that they're not going to go peacefully. I think that they have their own little entourage of their own but I do agree with you too, Zen, that they, you know, they play both sides. George Soros and uh, Kissinger, whom all of these people have worked for, even the man, I forgot how you say his name, but he's talked about the coup, the military coup. Um, he worked for Kissinger. And I think that he might be on his own now, as a lot of people are starting to resign and uh, want to fight for the Constitution. I think that a lot of chaos is going to happen. I don't think that Soros or Kissinger really care uh, who's going to win the election because I think they have other plans in store for the new world order. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Rothschilds are in control of everything and that they are setting up the market to crash. And yes. they ha they have plans of their own. And I do believe that they are at war with the Rockefellers in some sort of way also. So I think that something definitely probably will happen and, and a lot of chaos is going to happen. But like Kathy said, they're not going to go peacefully They They want to run that, that white house. <laughs> right. and, I, and I do agree that there is infighting going on as far as the, the power elite, um, but no matter, you know, which hand, uh, uh, you know, it's like the different fingers on the one hand, uh, they're all serving Satan and giving allegiance to them. And uh, as I show in my work, they're, you know, blood related and, and connected to um, the powers, the principalities, the rulers of darkness. So essentially it is a spiritual war and they are uh, bowing down um, in order to these spiritual powers, the rebel angels, which have been here, exiled here for a very long time, and that have been given temporary reign over this fallen world. Tim? No, I, I completely agree with the assessments that people are making right now. Um, I'm just hopeful that uh, we uh, get one, you know, that the Lord intervenes, basically, is what I'm saying, and that uh, the least amount of damage is done to the least number of people and that those who are corrupt completely, you know, get dealt with in the, um, what do you want to say? The civilized manner that the society was set up under of law and order rather than armed conflict. Yeah. And I, I do know also that, um, in the scriptures it said that in the last days that, um, the evil would be exposed for what it is. And, um, you know, as far as how this is playing out, I hope it takes down as much of the, the evil structure that is set in place and that has corrupted, uh, like Levin, um, what should be a representative form of government, even though I don't believe we've had that for a very long time, uh, even the fact that the, you know, the Federal, Federal Reserve was instituted way back in 1913, and they have uh, taken over, you know, being able to regulate commerce and print the money and to um, to manage all of that when Congress should be determining that and uh, 
you know, as far as weights and measures and, uh, but I mean, they have owned control and printing the money. Um, they've been able to fund these three global wars. Albert Pike in his vision spoke about the need to, uh, to manifest uh, these conflicts in order to bring forth uh, their whole vision and the agenda of a one world order. Uh, and manifesting this world government so that they can then uh, offer it over essentially to the Antichrist. And, you know, it's my opinion that's where everything is really going and that it's not just about world government, but that it is essentially about bringing forth this alien God and handing over that world government and that um, global matrix to this particular you know, ancient alien who will be um, uh, hailed as the savior uh, of humanity uh, rather than Christ because that whole thing is being counterfeited as far as they know and the Christians know and scripture says that Christ in second coming will separate the harvest, uh, that the wheat and the tares will be separated, the tares gathered for burning and the wheat for preservation. And so... Um, Definitely Lucifer and the Antichrist, Apollyon, Abaddon, that he is going to counterfeit that whole scenario and bring forth in his own um, substitute way that exact thing in order to trick as many people as he can. Uh, let's go to Kathy for comment, and then I'll we'll roundtable back to you, you two. Well, I, I just think it's fascinating um, if you understand, you know, what is going on in the world right now, uh, geopolitically, all the players involved, and you understand what has been laid out, like Pike, um, the Illuminati, other secret societies. There is um, something, I, I don't remember exactly the text that it came from now, but um, years ago, uh, Serge Monast had written about this, uh, that part of the plan was to flood the nations with uh, immigrants. And you can see that going on. And that was to break down the barriers, break down uh, the, the uh, national sense of countries. And I mean, you can see that going on in spades. And that was that has come about pr primarily from the wars, the incessant wars that that we are bringing about. But then everything is uh, coinciding, coming together prophetically. You look at yes. uh, Isaiah 17, 1 with Damascus being a, a ruinous heap. I mean, it's there. I'm sure it's going to get worse. Um, Gog and Magog that, that you all had talked about. Um, I mean, most Christians look at that differently. Uh, so many are just blind and asleep to all that's going on, but everything is just coming to a crescendo and it's happening so quickly. It's absolutely fascinating to me. I'm really excited. I mean, also understanding that, I mean, Jonathan Clegg put out a video tonight with this coup that's going on, Steve's uh, video, and this is it, this is it. He was so excited, it reminded me of the Charlie Frost character in, in the movie 2012. It was really, it was a great thing. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, on one hand, we're really excited. On the other, it's, you know, there's a lot of death and destruction that can come. And that's been their plan all along. Right. Order out of chaos. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Link in the chat room says uh, the Jesuits most certainly, um, you know, with Hillary, the, the vice president uh, being uh, Keen or Kane or whatever his name is, that uh, he's certainly um, part connected with the Jesuits, Pope Francis. And I think that these different individuals are being uh, put into place in order for them to be able to accelerate the agenda even faster than uh, what it is um, right now. Tim? Oh, I, I, I completely agree. Uh, the, um, the, uh, I saw the, what was it, the new Jesuit general was from Venezuela that just came in, the Black Pope, the new Black Pope. Oh, I didn't even see that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just this past week. They really? Put it, and I said, wow. oh, Venezuela of all places, huh? Right. Right where we got the major communist takeover and a collapse of society that we're choosing a black pope from Venezuela. Right. And I where wanna, they already have done it successfully. Yep, exactly. I'm saying of all the places that choose somebody to head up your order, right where they've done it successfully. Right. 
you know, so I that was repeat it here. I didn't see anybody pick up on that. I, I remember Chris, I, I went and posted it and not a whole lot of people paid attention to it, but it just kind of went under the radar, uh, for a lot of people. But, um, yeah, this definitely, uh, yeah. Kane of all people, geez, right. where'd that guy come from? Yeah, just, exactly. <laughs> and, and you know, I was go. just going to say, I, I don't usually follow much, but I've heard him speak a couple of times and, oh my God, he is so annoying and so arrogant. Uh, but back to you, Tim. No, uh, I believe, you know, I believe like a lot of people are, we're watching the Jesuits trying to move things, uh, um, which made me, you know, on the, uh, it was just interesting how hard the Pope came out against our election, um, you know, and, and so it is interesting what's going on. And I'm, I'm with Kathy. I'm very excited because we know Jesus is coming back. I, I'm, I'm praying for an end time revival here and that people wake up. And a lot of people are waking up, and it's uh, it's actually very exciting to see. Yes, um, Chris. Yeah, um, I was just going to say earlier you were saying that they are waiting. The elite are they worship Satan, and they are waiting for his return. And you asked about what I'm working on and my recent studies. Um, I I've been working and collaborating with Anthony Patch. Me and Tim both have. And we have actually, we work on decoding things. Um, we have decoded the quantum computers and the numbers with octaves, and we have decoded them with the planets. And we have come a long way in our research together from a few years ago. And um, Satan in Revelation 12, 13, it talks about where Satan's seat is, that it's in Pergamum. Right. And we right. know we know that that seat belongs to Zeus, which is Jupiter. That is Zeus's throne, and Obama preached off that throne, and so did Hitler. Now, that um, just proves another fact that they are putting arches of Baal all over the world, the United Nations, on, uh, not Chris. only. Hold on, we'll we'll pick it up uh, right after this break. We'll be right back, everyone. All right, welcome back, everybody. I'm gonna just go ahead and turn it back over to Chris. Give you a chance to finish up your thought, there, sister. Okay, I was saying that the United Nations is building the arches of the bell all over the world. Now, this is the same thing as the replica of the Arch of Triumph that Titus took to Rome when he uh, conquered the Jews and stole all of their things. And so this is the same thing as that arch, saying that, you know, they're defeating pretty much the Christians. So they're putting these arches all over the world, and they're arches of Baal. Well, Baal is also Jupiter. And Jupiter... You know, the Pope called the Jubilees, the Bennu bird is the Lord of Jubilees in Egypt. And that's a long story. I don't want to get into that. But the Pope called the Jubilees. The end of the Jubilees is November the 20th. And that's when Jupiter goes into the womb of Virgo. We know that Jupiter is the son of Saturn in mythology, which Saturn is Samael, the lion, eagle, ox, and man and he became a split deity. This is going to be in our books or Nunos's box with all of our research and the names of the fallen angels and their translations into different cultures. Cool. Now, cool. yeah, so um, Jupiter is going to be birthed uh, September 23rd of 2017, and we're not date setters. We're not saying anything is going to happen, but it makes a lot of sense if Obama said, this is the year of our Lord, 2016, you can see it on the ready.gov page. Well, his Lord is Jupiter. He believes he's a son of Jupiter, just like all the other presidents, because they are in relationship to the queen. All presidents are related to the queen. The Rothschilds rule uh, the royal family. And... So I think that this is what they're preparing for with putting those arches up, um, actually pretty much giving the Arabs access to the Temple on the Mount, 
trying to shut the Jews out of the Temple on the Mount. Uh, the United Nations is doing that. The United Nations is building the bell arches all over the world, and they actually named Saudi Arabia uh, a head seat at the United Nations, which is pretty crazy. And the and also the Arabs, you know, their their laws, what they believe in, that women have no rights, Sharia. as well as a lot. Of, yeah, as well, you know. They gave Hillary Clinton a lot of money um, for her uh, campaign. And, and so they're actually a big part of the New World Order and in, in, in the end times as well. Oh, yeah. They're one of the um, main branches that, you know, in Albert Pike's vision, he speaks about how the Zionists, along with the Christians, with the support of the Christians, that they would be pinned up against the radical Muslim fanaticists and that they would wear each other out in battle. Uh, and that when the power, uh, when the, you know, power vacuum occurs, that then the atheists, the nihilists, the communists would step in to assume that power. And we can see how they've already been, you know, with the manufacturing base being moved out of America being established in these communist countries, uh, specifically in China, and then all of these cheap, uh, poisonous, toxic um, goods being imported and sold, you know, through Walmart and things of that nature, the uh, dollar stores and all of that, that, you know, America is being set up for ruin. And they're doing this on purpose, um, allowing us to borrow just incredible amounts of money from China and then spending money just like, you know, there's no tomorrow and um, like we never have to pay it back. The the amount of debt that we're in now and um, having to pay down uh, all this interest with all this taxpayers money, it's just ridiculous that we ever allowed um, and, and that the Federal Reserve, you know, it being a privately owned bank, um, all of it is just a, a, a huge um, Ponzi scheme. And it's the American people which are being um, forced to suffer and pay for it uh, because it's, as it says on the, uh, the Satanist dollar bills, um, that it's all backed, legal tender, backed by the goodwill and faith of the American people. I say that, um, you know, if the Federal Reserve created the debt, the government created the debt, they should own it not the people. Uh, Tim? Oh, I've, I've been saying that for a long time. I said, hey, it's a private bank, isn't it? So it's their exactly. debt. Exactly. It's exactly. their debt, and they they should get RICO acted and to have everything confiscated for them for defaulting and leave us out of this. I agree. Um, but uh, the main thing I'm looking at as far as well, what I want people to grasp is that, uh, like in pop pop culture, the movies such as V for Vendetta, uh, trauma-based mind control, we're going through a global version. What's going on now, this is a global version of trauma-based mind control. So rather than focusing on the one person being tortured and tortured and then bonding with their torturer, which is the Luciferian doctrine after they torture the globe by crashing the Christians into the Muslims and the Jews and all this kind of stuff, that the people be so exhausted that they want to latch on to the knight in shining armor, which will be this Luciferian character, whether it's alien deception or whatever. But the point is, it's a global-based, trauma-based mind control that we're under right now. And if people can understand, they're just doing the same game just on a corporate global level. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and that's what we see playing out. And I'm going to actually pull up the um, the quote that we are bringing forth and, and referring to so that the listeners can get a better idea, a better sense of what it is that we are absolutely uh, referencing. But before I do, I want to give uh, both Kathy and Chris a chance to comment on this. And then, um, then we're going to answer a question that was posed in the in the, the chat room. And so, uh, Chris, let's go to you first, and then we'll go to Kathy. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to say, too, that through the research, I decode numbers and words. 
and Anthony um, Patch has given me a few numbers to decode with the quantum computers. And one of them is 65,536, which is how many neurons we have in our brain. So Tim is talking about mind control, and we're talking about a quantum computer that is pretty much a new age Faraday cage. It's a channeling machine to the other side. And that number, I translated it, and I went on Richie from Boston show, and I actually uh, showed all of the words and all the translations that I went through, but it means the keys of Jupiter. And I found that very interesting because he is Bell and because of the uh, cycles that is happening uh, right now with him being birthed uh, and everything. And from the worship of him through the sons of Jupiter, those, the, the sons of Jupiter are going to be in our book also when Jesus preached against the gates of hell at the Caesarea of Philippi. So he is, uh, the sons of Jupiter will be in our book. Nero is an anagram for CERN. It means 666. His name also translates to that. And I decoded that number all through our book uh, also. It's going to be called uh, Cernunos's box. Cernunos is the shaman in the sky, which is Orion. His head alternates, uh, which is the different planets. Um, and they, they become suns like Jupiter, Mars, Saturn. And the birthing of the Antichrist uh, which is talked about in our show that is on End Times Matrix News YouTube, talks about how CERN is over Apollo's temple and how they want to birth the Antichrist and how the casket of Osiris, which is the boat of Ra, is in the center of CERN. And we talk about that in depth on our show, and we have another one coming out with Anthony, which is part two that we haven't uh, finished releasing yet. But all of this is big information because it ties in with the end times. We're pretty much reverse engineering um, technology on our research to show what exactly what they're doing. But as Tim said, it is all mind control because in the, in the Bible, there was two trees. One was life and one was consciousness. If we go with the tree of consciousness, then that is what Satan wants is our mind. If we go with the tree of life with Jesus in our heart, that is life, and that is the way to the other side because he is the only gate. There is no other gate to heaven other than through Jesus Christ and his DNA because uh, DNA is what this is all about also, and that will also be uh, in our videos talking about the the DNA connected to CERN. Very cool. Um, Kathy, and then I've got a couple quotes I'd like to share. Good. I want to hear a lot more from Chris. <laughs> um, I, and I wanted to ask her, too, about Cernonos and um, relation to the Gothard Tunnel opening, because that was really a freak show. Um, the, only, the one thing I wanted to share, I had this quote that I shared with everyone. I sent out a uh, an email newsletter. I'm doing it. I sent out three this afternoon. If anybody wants on that, I'm sending out breaking news. I'm pretty much trying to pay close attention, you know, 24 seven, um, write me paralandra77 at gmail.com. It's P E R E L A N D R E. Uh, wait, <laughs> P E R E L A N D R A seven, seven at gmail.com. Anyway, uh, this quote from Abraham Lincoln, America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. And that seems really um, to hit it right now. Yes. Um, the quote from Albert Pike um, about the Third World War. And also, for those that don't know about the vision of Pike and the agenda for these three world wars um, as means to perpetuate, propagate, and to bring forth a one world order, this uh, this vision was written down in letter to Giuseppe Mazzini, who was the head of the eastern side and part of the the head of the Italian mafia. Um, that Pike was the controller, the sovereign grandmaster of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry here in America and in the West. But Giuseppe Mazzini was the controlling uh, old world and European. Um, 
Scottish, I mean, uh, sovereign grandmaster of the Illuminati there. And so they worked together and he wrote a letter in 1871, I believe it was in August sometime, and he described having this vision. And since that time, we see with the uh, procuring of the Federal Reserve System that they then had the money and the power and the authority and being able to print the money and loan it to our government at interest that it was then soon thereafter that we have these wars being manifest. World War I, uh, the introduction then of the League of Nations, which failed, and then after the bloody and horrific mess of World War II, then all of the nations were willing and ready to give up sovereignty in order to uh, merge in union through the United Nations um, to resolve their issues and the conflict amongst nations. And so that's when the United Nations has been granted um, respect and authority, even though they most certainly are not deserving as such. Uh, if you look at the history, they've done nothing to stop or stem wars, but have only encouraged and um, created and manipulated. But anyways, uh, so this vision is of the third world and a war. And if they have already successfully brought forth these two, well, what does that tell you about what they have planned as what I'm about to read? It says, the Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agenture of the Illuminati between the political Zionists, which are those that um, have pushed for the uh, recreation of the nation state of Israel, and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such way that Islam and the Muslim Arabic world and political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations once more divided on this issue will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economical exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm. You need to talk about the, uh, you know, destruction of the financial, um, world order, uh, social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, the origin of savagery, and of most bloody turmoil. Then, and here's the kicker, then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirits will form that moment, be without compass or direction, anxious for an idea, but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer." brought finally out in the public view. The manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism both conquered and exterminated at the same time. And so you can see that they want to bring forth Luciferianism, the introduction of the Antichrist. You can find all this in the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. They even talk about this social cataclysm, uh, a great economic destruction, which we see all being played out and planned. Uh, and so the, it, the writing is on the wall. It's been there for a very long time. And they have been um, very successful in fomenting and bringing forth this particular vision by Albert Pike. Uh, let's get comments. Um, Chris, I'll go to you first, and then I'll read the question from the chat room. Okay. Yeah, the the um, I do see all of that playing out very soon. Um, I mean, it's interesting they haven't taken our guns away yet. And we know that that's going to come with the United Nations. But um, but I've read Albert Pike and I've read about the wars and with the Zionists, the Muslims, 
And we have this decision that was on the Temple of the Mount. They can build it, uh, you know, very quickly if it, if it is built and they have the calf ready, the red heifer, and everything is ready. We have the new world order into place where um, the Pope wants the one world religion. He's already met with all world leaders. He's already met with Google and uh, many other uh, with with Apple and and the reason I think that he is is because he understands what's going to happen with this technology when the portal opens because CERN admits to the, you know themselves that they are going to open a portal. They've already been able to reach to the other side and take back ten percent of energy that they put back in that they put in. So they've already been able to communicate with the other side for many, many years. It's kind of like uh, um, when, you know, channelers would channel and then they had the remote viewers with the military, all the mind control things, you know, the looking glass and all of this uh, mind control stuff is exactly the quantum computer, except it is uh, very high technology from fallen angels. It's fallen angel technology and that's who they're communicating with is with the nine the nine you know the ogdode right. which becomes uh the any any they that's who they communicate with um and, and interesting because tim and i talked about this in grand detail in the last show that we did and we spoke about how uh the most high had been holding a restraining hand and that um he uh, that's why the, he brought destruction upon Atlantis um, in the olden days and also uh, uh, with the Tower of Babel and all that they were trying to do during that time. And with the flood um, in wiping out the presence of the giants that the Most High has at every turn of the way judged the fallen angels and has rendered their attempts uh, mute and, and nullified them Um but that is my opinion that this time he is going to allow them to succeed and to call forth um, and to remove his restraining hand in order to allow them to accomplish what they are hoping to. And, um, and I shared the a passage from the Emerald Tablets, which talked about them bringing forth these dark beings and calling up, you know, with great magic from the dark and the deep below and and i think that with the release of the fallen ones and the locust army and the giants from the uh the hollow earth that all of that has a part to play in the judgment that is coming and the, the wrath of god being poured out on the wicked and those not being that are not written into the books of life that he's going to give them exactly what they want and that they, you know, will then wonder at the be after the beast, and that they will be, um, will be persecuted by those entities which they call forth. Tim. Well, I just um just I'm just enjoying the conversation. I I do believe that um, at at some point we're going to see the removal of the America from the the superpower Protection. role. Oh yeah, and that too. Yeah, for the uh, new world order to have their day, so that uh, you can have a fulfillment of the of uh, that side getting to you know reap what they have sown, and the Lord will. I believe the bold judgments will be that point where they're going to uh, reap all that uh, wrath, and um, it it's just going to be a horrendous loss of life. So yeah, it's it's definitely definitely devastating what we're talking about here, uh, what we're on the edge of this. And I mean, I keep telling people it's it's time to get saved and and uh, and come out of the delusion and the state that you're in, um, to recognize that uh, there is a division going on here between good and evil, and that uh, you have to choose at some point, or else it'll be chosen for you. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, Can I ask a question? Can I yes, a yes question? please. Go oh. ahead. Uh, look, um, Kathy, do you want to ask the question? And then yeah, it, it's real quick. Kristen. I was wondering because we're we're looking at you know 
a destruction of America at some point. Yes. Um, I wonder if a hint might be they, they had talked about uh, constructing a collider in Texas. Do you guys know if that has gone forward? Is that because I would I would think that, OK, so they have CERN still. Maybe they weren't really serious about the one in Texas. Um, that program was shut down. That okay. was actually under George Bush, the senior, I believe, out there in Texas. And that was going to be a really big, uh, much bigger. Uh, that one shut down, I believe. There's several synchrotrons uh, around the globe. Uh, I believe when the internet goes down permanently, then you will have the second, the new, the new world order internet, which will be linked up with these synchrotrons. All right. Hold the thought. Chris, we'll come to you when we return. Be right back, everyone. All right. Welcome back, everybody, for second hour. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Momentary Zen. I have as co-host with me this evening, Kathy Dunson, and special guests, both Chris and Tim from End Times Matrix News. Uh, Chris, I wanted to give you a chance to finish up with your comment, and then I'm going to pose the question from the chat room. Okay. I just wanted to comment um, that the when the antichrist is here he's released he said that they're going to follow after the beast and the world is going to follow after the beast but i think that uh, first before the beast is released there's a beast that's released from the sea and there's a beast that's released from the earth and the beast is translated to hunter which represents orion in the sky Orion is pro, proto uh, Sarnunos is proto Shiva, and that was noted as the constellation Orion in ancient times, and that's why um, Shiva is standing outside of CERN. But I just wanted to say that God seals those that are His on their forehead before the Antichrist is released from the pit. And it also, the Bible says that those that wonder after the beast are the ones that are not sealed by God. Right. And the reason is, I believe, is we go back to what Tim was talking about with mind control in this quantum computer and the portal opening. I think it all has to do with protecting the mind, uh, because if we belong to God, then he protects our mind um, and we don't follow after the base. We don't follow Lucifer. We're not going to pledge to Lucifer in the end times for the new world order. Yeah, I fully agree. Yeah, I fully agree. Uh, and I would also say that it's my opinion, as Kathy had stated earlier, that uh, America is Mystery Babylon and that I know so many people do not see or believe that America is written into scripture, I'm certainly not one of them. And I do believe that um, Jeremiah 50 and 51 uh, and that Ezekiel 38 and 39, that they are related and also Revelation 17 and 18 are related to the judgments that are coming against America in a single hour and a single day and that we right now are the world power that the New World Order has to bring to our knees in order to bring forth the world government and to give the United Nations the authority that there cannot be a just independent country that has the power and authority to, um, to just not fall in line with the United Nations. And that this is one of the reasons why we have the visions of individuals like Dimitri Dudelman, A. A. Allen, um, D David Wilkerson, uh, so many um, that have had prophecies of America being attacked by the Russians, by nukes from uh, Russian submarines, and also an invasion uh, by Chinese troops, that all of these things are in play. Uh, Kathy, let's go to you, and then we'll go back to Tim, and then I'll uh, after you comment, I'm going to give everybody the question uh, from the chat room. Uh, well, I, I would just uh, direct people to the Last Days Ministries Prophecy website where a lot of those are. 
we see uh, prophecies, dreams, and visions that are confirming that um, on a daily basis. Uh, there are many channels that we follow on our Facebook page that that we share and I share in the newsletter as well. There was one this evening that came out, <laughs> fire and destruction. You know, so these things are all confirming. And I would just suggest that everyone needs to be prepared to, to meet their creator at, at any moment. I mean, we are never promised more than our, you know, <laughs> we're never promised another moment. We're just a vapor in, in time. So that's, I mean, that's all I've really got to say. I, yeah, I just absolutely. don't want to hear them. <laughs> You're Chris and Tim. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. And um, I would also invite people to check out a website called America's Last Days. Right. I, I, yeah, that that's a really great website. It has all the visions, George Washington, you know, all the different prophets, uh, modern day prophets over the uh, the last decade, which have had these visions um, and how it ties together with Mr. Babylon. But all right. So here's the question from the chat room. Uh, how can believers be in the world matrix but not of the world in the matrix and i'll i'll start off with the answer uh it's my opinion that even though we all you know have to make money have to pay our bills we have to play the game as we were born and indoctrinated into it, it the the idea is to not dedicate all of your time your focus and your energy to having to um stay caught up in that world that we are to keep a foot in both worlds but that we most certainly must as much as we can give our focus to the kingdom and to seeking relationship with god into understanding yeshua as savior messiah as chris said earlier that it is only only through christ that we will be saved and guaranteed an eternal inheritance with him in paradise and a return to our first estate. And so um, the the whole, you know, as much as you can, do what you can to feed your family, take care of yourself, to make money, to pay your bills, to not get in any debt or overspend, uh, because that keeps you in bondage. If you are spending more than you make or you know, trying to live an extravagant lifestyle, then that's going to force you to be a slave to the system and have to work harder and dedicate more of your time, your life and your effort to um, to making all that happen. And so that's what I would say. Um, focus on the kingdom as much as you can. Tim, let's go to you first. Well, I think uh, my simplest way of looking at it is uh, Lucifer would be the king of the flesh. Yes. And this is a flesh kingdom. So the matrix, I would say, is a flesh kingdom uh, and that they try to entice you through your flesh. So whatever material goods or senses, any of your senses uh, that are overstimulated, uh, the, he wants to hook you up and drain you, your life force through the matrix. Uh, the difference with Christ, of course, is that the reconnection and spiritual life through Christ uh, he's the king of a spiritual kingdom. And so eternal life is through Christ the Lord. And so when you are born again, you find yourself not being interested in the fleshly things as much as you are into the spiritual things. Yes. And so there's the big dichotomy, the differing. Um, one interesting comment on, on Chris's comment about being a sealed. I've often looked at the armor of God in Ephesians 6, and verse 17, if you want to look at it, it says, take the helmet of salvation. Well, that right there is talking about a piece of armor that goes over your head and it seals you. You know, your salvation is your it seals you. This is actually, and I've begun looking at that as this is part of a hint to the sealing process. Why are Christians always uh, attacked by the world? Well, because we're not of the world, we're not of the matrix. And the point is we we have authority over the spirits of this world. And when we operate under our authority, we mess up the devil's plans. So 
I would have people just think about this, the sealing process that Chris talked about sealed in our foreheads and this helmet and the foreheads and covering of the head with salvation. I think they definitely uh, go together. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, I never, you know, thought about it that way or looked at it that way, but that is very interesting parallel. And uh, I fully see the connection. Um, Chris? Yeah, I was just going to say that um, we're, you were talking earlier about, and Kathy was talking about Mystery Babylon uh, possibly being the United States. And um, I'm not sure if it is or not, but we did a show called Mystery Babylon. And we also did one called The Eye of Orlando. It's funny how Orlando is shaped like a gun. And it's the eye. That's where all the stars are born. And um, we uh, show how Orion's belt is over the United States. And the uh, 88 degree is the Madrid fault line. Well, August the 17th of 2017, before Jupiter was born, there's an egg that goes across the United States, and the very center of the egg goes on the 88th degree, which is the Madrid fault line. California uh, represents 1-8 as the male sun, and New York represents the female uh, as the silver gate. That's why they did the Twin Towers and knocked those down as uh, showing the one world trade. Um, but we talk about all of that in our show and then how the 88 is a code for HH or H8, which are the Birkeland currents because Shiva translates to 88. Uh, it is the number seven, which Shiva means seven. Shiva also represents the seven planets, but also the Birkeland currents. Uh, which is the DNA that is going to connect from CERN uh, to Saturn. And we talk about a lot of that in our shows. And, and um, we talk about um, Shiva being a line that's past and future and explain all of that, how, it's, how Shiva is shown as formed into being. So that is interesting, I think, in the end times where the 88th degree is on the Madrid fault line. I know in old Navy maps, it shows that being split into two and California being in the ocean and most of Florida being in into the ocean. And I know they have a lot of uh, um, hidden uh, bombs or nukes. I don't know what they're called, Tim, but they're all around that line. Uh, they can it can they can just blow it whenever they want to. Mm -hmm. And then remember, remember Jonathan Cleck did the the hundred dollar bill was right. showing the nuke going in right. New York City, and even Obama said, "Well, um, I'm I'm more concerned with a nuke hitting New York City." Well, um, if the if nine eleven happened and they encoded it on the bills, why wouldn't we believe that it would happen in New York? The same thing would happen, right? And also the Murrah Building that was encoded, right, in the Pentagon. Yes. Yeah, the Oklahoma City body. Uh, and let me let me clarify um, the, as far as because I over, oversimplified that with America as far as being the connection with Mystery Babylon. I, I actually believe that Mystery Babylon is the New World Order system and that it includes the Vatican, the Jesuits, um, you know, the the woman writing the Scarlet Beast, that the New World Order system is that um seven the the kings and the seven horns that that is all you know the same system but that america is being established to fall and that we are the mystery babylon that is destroyed in revelation 18 and 19 so i kind of oversimplified that but that really the mystery babylon is the entirety of the new world order system which unites in you know the the illuminati connections the freemasonic connections of all the governments of the world um in their uh, putting forth the agenda for the destruction of america and in bringing forth the antichrist system and so um it's not as simple but i do see that america as far as the revelation 1819 judgment jeremiah 5051 
and uh, Ezekiel, uh, those judgments are against us. Um, and that New York is also the seat of the UN and the seat of where all the kings uh, of the world are, you know, currently located, especially when they come together for um, these United Nations meetings and they're plotting uh, against the world. And so um, let's go back to Tim. And then there's another question from the chat room. Yeah, I, I, I agree with the, the mystery Babylon being a system. Uh, and uh, it, it just is the old Roman uh, global empire type system that encompasses so much of the earth. I think the United States, of course, will be destroyed at some point. I think that's why they there's some prophecy. I forget which one it is, if it's Hopi prophecy or something about the white men coming out of the mountains in, uh, I believe it was Denver, Colorado, and I forget what the, that that mountain was. But uh, supposedly we have the, that's where the government of the United States would relocate to, in the continu continuity of government contingency. Uh, interesting. Yeah, uh, I haven't heard about that, but that is very interesting. Uh, Chris, did you want to comment? Yeah, I just wanted to say that the United Nations has a newer building in Denmark that is the eight-pointed star. Apollo represents the wheel and the eight-pointed star, and so does Inanna. Those are the 88s. Um, that's how they sign their names in angelic writing also, is eight. Interesting, interesting. You mentioned about the New Madrid uh, being um, 88th. Uh, was it the 88th parallel? Uh, we had an earthquake. I'm in Tulsa, and we're not far from there. And we had an earthquake last night. It was 4.5 magnitude, which is quite significant. And I wonder if, you know, if there's, um, you know, any anything going on to, to create that. I know they're, they're, they've been claimed to be caused by fracking, but um you know there could be more going on anyway i thought that was quite interesting yeah. i felt the last uh earthquake from oklahoma actually my whole building swayed and i'm in texas so i felt it that was huge i was typing an email right at the time to send so it was really big mm -hmm. crazy uh, also for those that don't know the um indonesian earthquake that um they had there was a, a nuclear test on the fault line, on that ring of fire fault line. And so that was actually caused by uh, what Chris had alluded to. Uh, they have the technology. They placed a nuke on the fault line, and that tsunami and the death of all those people was caused by that particular test. Uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can look it up, and there is information out there which confirms this. So. Uh, I'm going to answer this question really quick from the chat room. Uh, Rayo asked me specifically, how about the Sumerian text in relation to your Bible Genesis account? Uh, I cover this in great detail uh, in my sixth book, Sons of God, Who We Are and Why We're Here. And um, that's not the focus of you know this particular uh, show this evening, but I invite you to take a look at that information and um also for the listening audience uh just know that i just did a five-part series with uh stan johnson and the prophecy club on the sons of god that particular book and its connection to these kind of things so check out that series it should be released within a few days um he is currently editing those shows for release and we're doing two more shows on this topic tomorrow. So it'll be a seven-part series. Um, let's uh, go back to Tim. I'm going to give you a chance, brother, to bring forth anything of interest. We're already down to what will be the final segments shortly. So I want to give you opportunity to bring forth anything of interest, anything that um, you feel you know a pressing need to share uh, about anything. So please. Well, my, my main focus right now is just um, I, I'm doing a lot more podcasting on salvation things. 
and it's actually been kind of interesting. I just had put out recently the Seven Things That God Hates podcast and uh, paralleled it with our um, Obama and Hillary uh, and the verses of uh, the, in that. And, and then all the stuff came out right after that podcast. So it was actually kind of a – it had that prophetic feel that it was meant for that release time. So I'm continuing uh, mainly focusing on trying to focus on the scriptural – um, many podcasts to go along with our big research projects that Chris and I and Anthony are involved with, with the decoding. Um, really looking forward to the Cernunos coming out because it's time for that book to be released. It's got so many interesting combinations of scripture and the sons of God, uh, the sons of Jupiter in there. Uh, they look exactly like our leaders of today. If you look, uh, can imagine Caligula and Nero and then you're just looking at uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary and um, Barack Obama. They're all the same Caligula, Nero type individuals. And so the parallels are unreal. So um, uh, Chris is doing a great job with uh, coming out with the decoding that she's doing. And uh, I think our next project should be coming out pretty soon on part two of our... Uh, these are big projects, so sometimes they take some time to come out. But, um, yeah, mainly scriptural, getting through this time of the elections, um, supporting the Christians out there, and uh, preaching the Gospels uh, where I am right now. Absolutely. Chris, I wanted to ask you about the book and about, um, you know, about how many pages it is. Um, the, and if you would, mention some of the chapters, talk about it a little bit, uh, share, you know, some more revelation on it. And then um, do you have any other uh, projects, book projects that you'll be working on? Uh, or are you working on multiple? Because I know I do that. I'm working on three different books at the same time right now. Um, but if you would, can you elaborate further on that? Yes. Um, I We are working on Sir Nunos's box. It's almost completed is not going to be a very long book it has a lot of visuals in it lots of uh, photos and codes it has a lot of different subjects um, that flow together with CERN uh, Jesus uh, preaching at Caesarea Philippi which uh, is where Pan's uh, the gate of Pan is and Pan is the son of Hermes Hermes uh, means for Hermon means forbidden place, and it is uh, Mount Hermon where the Watcher class of fallen angels descended. And this is in the book of Enoch. And so I have the verses, and we talk about in our book and calculate and show in other books that were not in the Bible, but they are they are books that have that that they do combine with information of the Bible, and it makes a lot more sense if you read those books also. Um, but it but I have calculations in the book when the year that the angels fell with a lot of proof, uh, and in what generation the names of the people that were named after the fallen angels of that year. And so I have the book basically is talking about the fallen angels, uh, the gates of hell, which Jesus preached against, talking about CERN opening, opening up a gates of hell. It talks about the four faces of Samael, which is the lion, the ox, the eagle, and the man. It breaks down the names of the leader fallen angels with those four faces. And then it continues on to break down with some of the gods that are worshiped in different cultures. So we have that. And then we talk about the sons of Jupiter and um, who they were and some of their temples and how they believe that they are the children of Jupiter. And I mean, of Ju yes, Jupiter and Venus and Jupiter is actually the resurrected Saturn, but that's going to be in my book uh, talking about the Ogdode. So we have um, a lot of decoding in this book with the number 666, and we have uh, Egypt uh, talking about the city of Pan that was in Egypt in the translations, and also um, Sir Nunos, which is the, the proto-Shiva, which is the 
uh, star of, you know, Orion, actually all of Orion, which Orion's head was cut off. And Shiva's son, uh, Ganesh, actually translates to 4096. This is not in my book, so I'm skipping around here. But <laughs> so but basically our book is, it, that's basically what it entails, is it basically has a lot of scripture. It talks about Pointus Pilate working for Tiberius. He was a Roman emperor. So Ty, Pointus, uh, Pontius Pilate was not um, a, a powerful emperor. He was a king. All right, we'll be right back for final segment. All right, welcome back, everybody, for final segment. Uh, let me go back to you, Chris, let you get uh, finish up with what you were saying. And also, if you would, uh, what's the Ogdod? Okay. Um, the Ogdod is is the it is basically the cosmic egg in Egypt and it represents four frogs and four snakes and they came from the abyss they represent the planets on the Kabbalah tree and they ride their boat of Ra they merged with the Enid in Egypt in Heliopolis uh, which is the the temple of the sun which uh, means Saturn. It translates to Saturn. Saturn was Helios, and he was the sun in the um, Golden Age. So Hermopolis, uh, and you know Hermes is the moon god, and he is the leader of the Ogdode. And well, actually, Jupiter is Amon, um, which he is his spirit in a, in a certain aspect, but. Uh, Thoth is the one who is the mini, the Bennu bird, which lays the egg um, and births the the Ogdode. And basically, this is what CERN says that they want to do. They want to birth uh, the the cosmic egg again. They want to um, recreate the Big Bang. Now, the Ogdode happened in 2600 BC. And it's a lot to go into, um, but I've studied it for years, and in and this is pretty much the core of understanding ancient history in Egypt and understanding how the pagan religions believe today and how they worship the Antichrist. The Ogdode, if you think of it this way, they're basically, if you think about Saturn, fell and then there was the flood, and then the Ogdode came. They all, all of the planets are equal to Saturn. They represent Saturn. So Saturn was the lion, the eagle, the ox, and the man, and he split his deity. Jupiter is the eagle. Mars is the man. Mercury is the ox, and Venus is the lion. And they all surround Apollo on the Kabbalah tree and make a pyramid. And that is who they want to birth as the sun is Apollo. Now, uh, throughout history and cycles and the fight of the throne through Set and Horus, there was, uh, you know, the, the sun god Ra uh, had many aspects. Uh, you know, there was Re, which represented Uranus and also Thoth in another aspect. But this, and that's from my, based upon my research. Um, but... Actually, um, different cycles of the planets would say, okay, well, Jupiter is the sun, so they would call Jupiter the sun, and or Mars the sun, um, and, and or you know, like um, Cat, uh, is, Kathy is her name, right? Yeah, she was asking about the Gother Tunnel. Well, the two mountains on the side, and the and then you come out into the light is showing uh, the sun being born between two mountains. And that has everything to do with the hieroglyphs in Egypt with a scarab beetle representing the sun as the crab. The nebula, uh, the crab, uh, the M44 beehive is in the crab, and that's where the souls are said to be born. And so it's just a lot of in-depth research, but the Ogdode is pretty much the core key. It, it represents the cosmic egg, the Ganesh, is the cosmic egg in India. The Ogdode is the cosmic egg in Egypt. And the cosmic egg exactly translates to 4096. 
4096 is the Chaturthi Ganesh, which in they worship the cosmic egg, the past, present, and future. And 4096 is the key. And then the next step up from that, when Anthony explains it on our shows uh, with the octaves, the uh, 8192 is the next uh, computer, and that represents the gate. And it also is the signature of Azazel on the Kabbalah tree, and it translates to IXXI. This is all heavy duty stuff. Can I ask, um, do you think there's a connection with Lady Gaga and the egg that she was traveling in uh, to birth a new race? Yeah. Um, actually, Pluto represents Osiris and the dead. And Osiris resurrected as Jupiter as Saturn. And that's very complex. But Gaga is a, is a translation for... Uh, the DNA, and also Gaga was Pluto. Pluto used to be named Gaga, and the and the uh, the moon of Saturn, which is his sun, and then he became Pluto. When Pluto became in our atmosphere, that is when we got Wi-Fi connection during the 1930s. Uh, that's when Hitler got a hold of it, and he did the IBM computer. Well, CERN is the same thing, but it's a huge uh, computer system compared to what was uh, back then, but yes, Lady Gaga is representation of of uh, Pluto. Pluto was the head of Orion at one point, and the head was cut off, and um, that's why we call it Cernunos's box <laughs> because the head was cut off. If you see the horns on Cernunos, those horns represent the trident, and that's the head of that was the head of Orion at one point. Wow. Um, can you talk about um, some of the chapters? Do you have already that um, lined out just to give, you know, people kind of an idea of um, some of the chapter yes. headings? Uh huh. What one of the chapters is called where it all began because pan means all and it is encoded with CERN in 666. And I have a little picture of his flute. Uh, with all the planets on each note, because all planets are notes. Uh, all planets are based on C, which Saturn represents Do as C, and then all the other planets are like C1, C2, C3, and they're all harmonic. And uh, that's another puzzle that I'm working on with Anthony. But Pan is the son of Hermes. Hermes uh, translates to Thoth, and... Um, and he was the one who fell on Mount Hermon, and he's the father of Pan in, in that language, and that aspect. So we have that, and we have the Gate of the Fallen Angels. Um, the, another chapter is the Leaders of the Fallen Angels. We also talk, uh, we have another uh, chapter about the birth of the giants. And um, in, in that chapter, we talk about how uh, demons roam the earth from the giants and how that is explained in different books. And we tie all of this in with uh, CERN. We also give the Bible Strong's translation. Hermes is the Strong's Concordance 2060. So I do put in all the Bible verses and the codes and the Strong's translations in uh, from the Bible in our book also yeah i'd like to do that too i think it's a great way to you know take people back to the original language and to give them uh, an understanding for the original context of the passages the verses the words that are um you know being brought uh, forth in, in understanding yeah yeah and then another chapter is the false alpha and omega. It, there's a code of the goat pan in there that translates to alpha and omega. And, um, and then I get into the Egyptian aspect of the book and the translations of the gods that um, translate uh, to the number 666, just like Nero in uh, Rome. So we have a lot of, of um, different chapters in there, but I'm still editing the book and 
uh, Tim's actually helping with a large part of that. So, um, but that is basically the bulk of it and the bulk of the research. And, and it ties in with Jesus uh, preaching at the gates of hell, um, explains, you know, who the fallen angels are and how it, it applies today and how CERN wants to open up these gate, gates and these leaders think that they're the sons of Jupiter. They're, it's the same thing. It's history repeating itself, um, basically. Yeah, I, I, when I write, um, I write a, a similar uh, about like, of course, different topics and different research, but um, in, in a similar way in, in tying those kind of themes together, the fallen angels, the giants, the enmity between the seed lines, the connections with the war in heaven, the idolatry, the worship of the pagan gods, uh, the dragons, you know, all these pagan deities, um, uh, their connections to the antediluvian um, feathered serpent and the worship all the of the pantheon of gods and goddesses, how that ties into you know current Luciferianism, sat, uh, Satanism, and the New World Order religion, the Freemasonic, um, uh, the reverence, the rituals, the blood sacrifice, all of that. Yeah, no, your your research and your books are way more in depth than than ours. We just kind of go with it with a different angle and um, kind of, you know, tie and turn in it and then um, the and decoding a lot. So there's a lot of decoding the number 666 uh, with different gods and different things and showing this little trail. And um, the other book that I'm working on is called The Unicorn Antichrist. And that one is a, co a decoded book also because unicorn means uh basically it dagon means corn and uni is also another god which is asherah and she is a uh, part of his deity so and you in is the beginning of you is unicorn in the end and then i go to explain the translations of venus and jupiter and how those codes make you in and it is tied to the baphomet so the unicorn antichrist is also has to do with the stars and the um, the triangle that's behind Orion and birthing the beast. So that is another book that I'm working on. And the other one, uh, you know, uh, like I said, is it has to do with the Ogdode. So I can explain the Ogdode and the Aeneid and the the resurrected Saturn and the under, underworld. And um, and then the other one is Joseph, the father of the Pharaoh. I've been able to um, translate many of the names in the Bible. I know who the Queen of Sheba is and her correct names uh, in Egypt and then the other names that she's called. She actually lived in the city of Pan in Egypt, which is a different name uh, that we know it by. And um, and she was the mother of Solomon's son. Right, and, Benelec. Um, was yeah. is, is that name Belchris by chance? Um, I'll send it to you. Um, I actually did a presentation. We did a little show on it a while back, but it's yeah. uh, her name. Uh, she One of her names is Carol Mama, and the other name I cannot pronounce. It is a long name that I, I can't mm -hmm. pronounce, but I'll send it to you. I can show you the proof that it's her with her artifacts at, at the same time uh, near Ethiopia. Okay, well, I was the reason I asked is um, I've been recently reading um a book called and it came to pass which is a a story of david uh, a bunch of uh old different tales and lost forgotten forbidden books uh in connection to david and solomon and it speaks about um uh, her and, and names her as belchris in this particular uh in one of the stories about the queen of sheba in that particular book uh, and uh, her meeting Solomon and everything. It's a fascinating story. Um, but wow, anyways, love yeah. To see that. Yeah. I'll, she can I'll, actually go by that name because she, all the Egyptians go by many, many names. names. Exactly, yes. And yeah, it could be yeah. one of her names, but um, I can send you what I have on that. I don't mind at all. And then um, I've translated Jesse's name, the father of David. Uh -huh. Um and and many many uh, names 
uh, in the Bible that I've done research on it. I love to uh, decode the names and figure out, well, who were they? I mean, why can't I see artifacts of them? If we can have ancient artifacts from many, many years ago, way before David, why can't I see them now? It's because uh -huh. they're hidden. They're right. hidden from us. And I, so I agree I with you. The, the names are so important because they reveal so much. Yeah, I have a very good source to also it, to decode those things, and I can send it to you. Okay, well, yeah, that, I'd be interested in um, checking all that out and looking at it. Um, let, let's get Tim and Kathy a chance to comment because we're nearing the end of the show. Tim? Oh, I was just going to follow up on the Lady Gaga thing that this whole cosmic egg is um, interesting for people who don't study it that the the pop culture references to it, the birthing of a new race that Kathy was bringing up, uh, is connected, I think, connected to the next year's event with the 88th parallel um, and the birthing of a new race, because I do think the, the counterfeiter uh, Lucifer wants to create his own race Absolutely. and 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 eliminate uh, the image bearers, which are us. Yeah, so, absolutely. I do see next year with that cosmic egg going over the 88th. And I look at the 88th the degree parallel also as the two columns in Freemasonry the, and um, the birthing of his new creation. And I do think that the geoengineering and the uh, just uh, terraforming this earth, I, uh, as I mentioned with Zen last time, I do believe that uh, he's just trying to recreate what God created, but this time make it his creation. Yes, you know, but, counterfeit. Counterfeit. And that's yep. that's basically uh, where my final comments. Okay, um, I'm going to answer this question really quick from Rayo in the chat room. What is the original language? If you read the Book of Jubilees, it tells you that Paleo-Hebrew is the original language of paradise. And not only did Adam and Eve speak that and um and also converse with the angels and god in that but that the animals before the fall uh, that they also spoke in hebrew and it also says somewhere in scripture that uh, we will be restored to this language at the end of days um, let me give kathy a chance to comment and then we'll go to chris uh, for final comment and to uh, share your information once more. Kathy? That was really interesting. You said that's in the Book of Jubilees? Yes, the Book of Jubilees speaks about uh, before the fall how they spoke Hebrew and it was the original language. And it also says, I believe in chapter 15, uh, that Abraham, um, that he is given insight by the angels and the Most High tells one of the angels to teach him the original language. And so he is then able to, he's restored this language um, and being able to read the old scriptures and the old, you know, the old language and, and in that way to bring forth the knowledge of the Most High once more because we know that, um, you know, Abraham was chosen uh, to be the father of the Hebrews and to bring forth the teachings um, uh, that were brought to Adam, given to Adam, passed on to Enoch, then passed on to Noah, and then passed on to Shem, uh, who was, um, according to some of the stories, Melchizedek, and that Abraham was led away and brought into what is called the, the Order of the Ancients, um, and that is also the Melchizedek priesthood. Uh, so anyways, that whole story you can find in many books, but specifically in one called The Writings of Abraham. But um, Chris, let me give you a chance to, we got like five minutes. If you would give out your website contact information once more, where people can go to find and support your work. And, um, and then a final comment from you as well. Okay. Um, endtimesmatrixnews.com is our current website and if you want information on everything that we're doing or updates or anything um, you can go to End Times Matrix News Facebook my Facebook is Chris E-T-E-M-N and my final comments were um, I have decoded 
the alpha, a lot of the alphabets. And I know that there is a split in understanding the, the Hebrew and the Phoenician alphabet is actually, um, the way that I understand it from my research, the Phoenicians were living on the 33rd degree. They were the remnants of the giants. The Phoenician alphabet are the stars. The Taurus is A, um, Gimel is B. So you have three letters that are the Gemini twins. And so I have decoded the uh, Hebrew alphabet with that star alphabet. Now, I'm not saying they believe the same way, so don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying that I decoded that. I also decoded some of the runic alphabets and with the stars and why they believe that they have this certain DNA from the DNA crossing. And um, so that's something that I'm working on also, but I have been able to decode the, the alphabet with the um, constellations, which can helps I, me to understand. And I wanted to say really quickly, uh, be sure and go to their YouTube page because the videos that they have done with Chris decoding and the graphics that she brings into that, just fascinating. There's so much to learn from that. It's very heavy with a lot of great information and graphics. So be sure and look into that. And I wanted to oh, ask, ask you this as well, Chris. Um, have you looked into the Maseroth and the, the message of the stars and how it tells the story of Christ being born of a virgin and how he would crush the head of the serpent, and that he would be savior messiah because um uh, if you if those that haven't uh, that the story of christ is encoded into the stars and the the various the zodiac and the constellations uh do you bring that forth in your work at all um actually um i i don't um i am trying to understand that aspect of it because i i do i do believe that because yeah, you know Satan copies everything about he copies everything about you know Jesus but I do think that now I have a study that I have decoded the sons of Jacob with uh the constellations and so that's a study that I have done I know that Jacob gave the blessing to um you know how um Esau sold his birthright yes well Jacob gave the birthright to Joseph's two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. I've also decoded their names in Egypt. I know who they are, and uh, which is very fascinating stuff. But, I, yeah, so I do believe that. I haven't gone to that extent to decode it with actually, uh, you know, Jesus. I'm very careful about that, you know. <laughs> but, um, but, no, I have, I have not done that. Well, that's a fascinating uh, study as well. Um, so I do, you know, recommend people check that out as well. Maseroth, the story of Christ and the stars. Tim, do you want to give out your contact information one more time? Okay, it's End Times Matrix News on Facebook. I cover a lot of the breaking political stuff mixed with um, the um, more of the podcast things and also the research that I do together with Chris and Anthony on CERN related topics. Um, and Chris, uh, let's see, uh, K R I S uh, E T M N on Facebook and the YouTube channel and, uh, the end times matrix news.com website, which we will be working on. And I, you know, it's a, uh, it's a pleasure being on your show and, uh, I'm really looking forward to getting this book out because the book really did come out of nowhere. It was one of those things where, we were just looking at CERN and we just, the God surrounding CERN and that just developed into this amazing <laughs> piece of research. It is like, wow, God just plopped it right in our laps, you know, so really interesting. Yeah, it's amazing the way that happens. Uh, so much of my research ends up being the same thing. In books. Hey, thanks both of y'all for joining you. us. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, God bless all. Shalom. Be blessed. Good night.
controlled opposition and the false left right paradigm. Uh, but uh, in talking with Stan today and other people, uh, they, you know, a lot of people seem to think that Trump is legit and that um, that he this could be like a Josiah kind of thing uh, for America. I don't see it as that because I know that they always give us the false illusion of choice. Um, but, you know, I'm open and we'll see. And I pray for the betterment of America and, and the world. But again, you know, as far as candidates, um, in my opinion, they are always chosen, selected by the the elitists in order to own both sides of the the whole, you know, dog and pony show. Uh, and I, I know a lot of people don't like um, my stance on that, but that's just what I've seen and have learned over the years. And, uh, you know, with these kissing cousins, which that was the name of an article that I wrote uh, about the George Bush elections with his cousin uh, Al Gore and then his cousin John Kerry. And then, you know, we had uh, Obama and um, John McCain. And, and Obama is also blood related to Dick Cheney and, and some of those. And so we'll see how it all turns out. But uh, I pray for the best. But anyways... Um, is there, Chris, is there any topic that you would like to open with, talk about, or, you know, just a, a commentary, anything you want to share as far as projects that you're working on, new knowledge, insight, wisdom that you've come across, anything of that nature? Yeah, I just, I wanted to agree with Kathy that they're not going to go peacefully. I think that they have their own little entourage of their own but I do agree with you too, Zen, that they, you know, they play both sides. George Soros and uh, Kissinger, whom all of these people have worked for, even the man, I forgot how you say his name, but he's talked about the coup, the military coup. Um, he worked for Kissinger. And I think that he might be on his own now, as a lot of people are starting to resign and uh, want to fight for the Constitution. I think that a lot of chaos is going to happen. I don't think that Soros or Kissinger really care uh, who's going to win the election because I think they have other plans in store for the new world order. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Rothschilds are in control of everything and that they are setting up the market to crash. And yes. they ha they have plans of their own. And I do believe that they are at war with the Rockefellers in some sort of way also. So I think that something definitely probably will happen and, and a lot of chaos is going to happen. But like Kathy said, they're not going to go peacefully there. They want to run that, that white house. <laughs> right. and, I, and I do agree that there is infighting going on as far as the, the power elite, um, but no matter, you know, which hand, uh, uh, you know, it's like the different fingers on the one hand, uh, they're all serving. Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. Most are afraid of unknown depths, skirting shores thinking world flat. And with the island girls in celebration of new religion, Nobody led me or said this way. I sailed alone on makeshift raft with wind as companion. Fate for deliverance, confidence enough to assess new disposition. Seekers of lost paradise may seem fools to those who never sought the other worlds. Welcome to Momentary Zen with Zen Garcia. Visit www.fallenangels.tv You're listening to Revolution Radio. And he made a plan with his powers. He sent his angels to the daughters of men that they might take some of them for themselves and raves offspring for their enjoyment. And at first they did not succeed. When they had no success, 
They gathered together again, and they made a different plan together. They created a counterfeit spirit who resembles the spirit who had descended so as to pollute the souls through it. And the angels changed themselves in their likeness into the likeness of their mates, the daughters of men, filling them with the spirit of darkness which they had mixed for them and with evil. They brought gold and silver and a gift and copper and iron and metal and all kinds of things. And they steered the people who had followed them into great troubles by leading them astray with many deceptions. They, the people, became old without having enjoyment. They died not having found truth and without knowing the God of truth. And thus, the whole creation became enslaved forever from the foundation of the world until now. Welcome, friends. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Momentary Zen here on Revolution Radio. I thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. I have as co-host Kathy Dunson. Kathy, are you there, sister? Yes, I am. Good evening, everybody. Uh, always a pleasure to fellowship with you, sister. And as special guests this evening, we have both Tim Clark and Chris Delion from End Times Matrix News. Uh, Chris, are you there, sister? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Uh, hello, and I'm glad that you were able to make it and join us this evening. Tim, are you there, brother? Yes, I'm here, and I brought Chris with me this week. Excellent. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the round table and uh it's just gonna be an informal setting and we'll just uh go into all things esoteric and so um but let me give you ch uh Tim chance to give out your website contact information and uh you know everything connected to end times matrix news and then we'll go to Chris. Okay, End Times Matrix News on YouTube. That's where we put all our videos. Um, we also have the two Facebook pages, Chris uh, ETMN and also End Times Matrix News. And you can catch what we're following there from breaking stories to our own posts, uh, some little podcasts we put up, different things. Excellent. Chris, do you want to share your contact information or Facebook or anything of that nature? Yeah, I'm on Facebook as Chris ETMN, and we have a website, endtimesmatrixnews.com, which we're actually in the process of updating into a new website. Okay, excellent. Um, when is that supposed to be online, or when's that... Uh happening well it's on it we are um, under hope. construction right now okay <laughs> so, so no no timetable for that right we're, we're trying to proceed quickly on that uh we're also working on the book project that chris and i are working on to bring that to fruition also excellent well um just uh no just yesterday november 1st we got our business license for sacred word publishing and so we are all legit and just just a matter of now um getting the website up and connecting it with the nonprofit, um which i did a show on all that so people can go check out the um endeavor freedom and sacred word publishing show to find out more about all that and yeah, of course, you can let us know if we can be of any service to you guys um, in what you are doing. We'll most certainly be glad to help out in any way. But um, let me give you, each of you, um, is there any new story that you find of interest? And I'm, I'm sure Kathy has several, uh, but anything that you want to mention here before we go into discussion? Kathy, do you have anything? Uh, well, uh I mean, there's so much coming out right at the moment on um, Hillary Clinton. Uh, there was uh, something, well, there's supposedly a counter coup going on. In tele uh, Steve Pajenik, um, who is from intelligence, past administrations, has uploaded a video talking about, you know, what uh, several intelligence people have come out uh, in their um, very strong in this trying to 
um, expose Hillary and, and what's going on and, and get her to step down from running for president. So, I mean, there's just things breaking every five minutes right now. <laughs> right, right. And uh, I'll share a comment. Um, uh, just uh, the past couple of days, I've been doing several interviews with uh, Stan Johnson over there, at Prophecy Club News, and he shared with me an interesting story about that same thing that you were talking about and the rediscovery of many emails that they had scrubbed and which they had disappeared successfully um, and that with the seizure of Anthony Weiner's cell phone and his laptop that they gained access to a lot of that material that was successfully disappeared and so this is why you know it particular time I I personally don't see how they would give up power I mean, not to go mm -hmm. completely. I just, I don't believe they would give up power. And so I look for, you know, what other things can happen. We've got Russia and we've got, you know, the U.S. is uh, so involved in the Middle East and in Syria. And that's a powder keg. Anything could happen at any moment. I don't see them wanting, I mean, we're going to see a peaceful transition of power. So, you know, we've got the voter fraud and, and then everything that's coming out showing what a treasonous government. So there's so many things that could happen in such a short period of time. Everybody needs to be paying attention. Mm, and praying. And, uh, praying. and uh, I'll, in the final comment on this, and then we'll go to, to Chris and Tim. Um, but the, the whole thing, you know, WikiLeaks has information and there's other stuff that is being released. And so uh, we know that the Clintons have whacked people that people have all of a sudden ended up dying in accidents or being shot in the streets i mean um the people that some of those that have gone up and that were going to testify against them have ended up dead and so there's the knowledge of that kind of thing happening too uh, as far as with the fbi and so um you know there are some who are wanting to come forward know they have to be very careful uh, because you know the high level assassinations have taken place, and that um, that is definitely a possibility uh, for those that might want to leak or bring forth any information. But anyways, uh, let me go to Chris or Tim. Do you have any comment on this or if you anything that you wanted to share with the uh, the listening audience, anything of interest? Chris, you want to go ahead? No, you can go ahead, Tim. I know you've okay. been following the news. Well, just on this story, I um, I mean, there's a couple ways of looking at it. I actually feel spiritually that there's a lot of uh, breakthrough as far as the potential for the corruption to be dealt with um, to some degree. I do believe that the uh, voting machines are compromised mm -hmm. um, and that even if we do see, uh, we, we've we seen the Hegelian dialectic play out between the patriots and the globalists, um, you know, that dynamic being set up here between the global, you know, globalist uh, communist takeover of the globe versus the Christian national um, independent freedom loving folks. So we've got that dynamic. But I actually feel that um, prophetically, I'm, I am agreeing with some people that see this as a that Haman is the spirit of Haman is possibly hanging himself in this scenario that we might have uh, with the prayer and fasting of the Christians going on out there that we might see a Esther like uh, event here where they they designed to have the Christians in the FEMA camps and all that and they might end up hanging themselves in the situation so those are my comments on that topic uh, I'll say one final thing uh, before we leave, and everybody knows my stance on the election. I just posted uh, recently on my Facebook page a, a very lengthy quote from the occult technology of power, which talks about the it's come to light again. And from what I understand, um, they most certainly have enough information to bring down the Clintons, and not just the Clintons, but so much of the establishment there in Washington, D.C., and also the Clinton Foundation accepting what, bribes. 
Yes. Uh, did you get a chance to read that article that I had sent you? Yes. Yeah. And from other things that I've heard about that, I think that's the most interesting aspect. And th what what that article, um, well, actually, it was like a letter. I don't know where it originated, but it, all of it rang completely true to mm -hmm. me. It said it was from an FBI insider. Right. Said not not to you know be so fixed on the emails because it's the Clinton Foundation right. that is the big kahuna here and from everything else that i've heard and seen um it's the foreign government involvement it's you know the tentacles all throughout the government you know we have a corrupt government and uh, this totally is yeah. what is ready to be blown sky high and right. you know it's it's uh, that's where the house of cards i mean i, I told my mother if you, anyone has seen house of cards on netflix you know, that's tame compared to what's really going on in our government, sadly. Yeah, I haven't seen that. But uh, also, uh, I've been told that, um, well, in, in that email that I sent you, it also speaks about how she had um, sold these secretive programs that she wasn't even supposed to have access to that one of somebody, one of her donors had given to her and that she traded these secrets off for high level donations through the Clinton foundation. And that, um, and this wasn't in the email, but that there are high level FBI agents that are um, resigning and, and retiring in order to protest. They're not indicting her and bringing charges. And so there's like, um, a lot going on in Washington because everybody knows how criminal and corrupt she is. And they're trying to force the hand of uh, Comey to actually do something about it. And the fact that he actually made um, a statement and brought this to the attention of the media before that of the election, because, you know, of course, uh, the Clintons and others have been trying to pressure him to withhold it and to not allow it to affect the well i say election selection but uh, right. uh you're right and and so um and they're trying to install her more certainly and and so we'll see what happens but there's a well, lot there. one other thing i'd point out because the black box voting with bev harris she's come out and i haven't heard this in the major media of course i'm not really surprised but about the fractional uh, fraction magic is what um, her video is called. And anyone who hasn't seen that, be sure and, and search on YouTube for fraction magic. And um, all of that is going on. And it's just amazing uh, that it has gone this far at this time. And, and so many things around the edges are, are just coming together at this 